In this video, we're gonna talk about the dangers of shorting stocks. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so shorting stocks can be dangerous. In fact, shorting anything can be dangerous, but I wanna focus specifically in this video on shorting stocks. There's a few things about stocks that you need to be aware of if you're gonna go short. Now, I just wanna add it out there that this is, could apply if you're shorting stocks, actually shorting the physical stock with a broker, or it can also apply, will also apply if you're shorting via CFD, if you're shorting via a spread bet. So whenever you're shorting a stock, you gotta be careful. Right, the first thing is, obvious thing with shorting is unlimited losses. So you have a scenario now, and, it, and also guys, sometimes you think, hey, this is not gonna to apply to me, it's not gonna to apply to me. You've gotta be careful because some things happen, um, you know, that sometimes you've got to expect anything to happen in the market and, you know, you be prepared for the worst case scenario. So you may think I'm shorting something that's a big company, you know, it's not going to currently rip up to, you know, multiple percents high. Things have happened. Buyouts have happened, bids, all sorts of stuff. Just be careful. Right. Anyway, the point is, if we buy this stock here at $10, what's our worst case scenario? Our worst case scenario is it goes to zero. Can't go below zero. Yeah, you buy £10,000, $10,000 worth of stock, it goes to zero the next day, you've lost your full stake. Hey, that's not good, and especially if you're trading on margin, that's gonna hurt you. But another scenario here, let's say this stock now goes to $100, okay? For whatever reason, it could be anything, could be good news, could be a buyout, could be over time, could be instantly. Okay, I'm sure the likelihood of that happening overnight is slim. But even if it's $50, even if it's $30, the point is your losses can be unlimited. And we've seen in markets before, we've seen small cap stocks, we've seen cryptos, we've seen all these things go many, many multiples up. You know, they've gone from kind of one cent to $100. And if you're short on that, you're losing a huge amount of money. So your losses are potentially unlimited. So remember that when you're shorting stuff, guys, you've got to be careful that, uh, you know, you've got a plan in place of exit. And also if you're shorting stocks, be aware of the gap risk you've got overnight and what have you. So being cautious that you can have unlimited losses with shorting. And even some of the thicker stuff, we've seen some stocks that are really big market cap stocks, double or treble over a year. And if you're short on that, you know, you're losing a significant amount of money. You're losing way more than your maximum risk if you were going long. So something to be uh, aware of there. Number two, stock recalls. When you're borrowing stock, and I've done a video on the actual mechanics of short selling, but you're, when you're short selling stock, should I say, you're effectively borrowing it from someone who owns the stock and then selling it into the market and you're giving him uh, a fee to do that. We'll come to that in a second. So that's as an incentive, that's incentivizes him to do it. But you're effectively borrowing the stock from a holder. That could be a long-term holder, a pension fund, mutual fund, whatever. They say, you don't care what happens in this six months period. You go ahead and make your money short term. I just want a little bit of change for doing it. So. But what can happen is holders of the stock can say, you know what, I need the stock back now, please. Thank you very much. And you have no choice. If you've borrowed the stock to sell and they say, hey, you know what, 24 hours to give me that stock back, you have to cover it, even if you're not ready to cover the position. So the point is you're being influenced, your trading decisions are being influenced by external forces rather than just yourself. You've got to hope that, that guy doesn't recall the stock when you don't want it. Maybe it's a loss to crystallize that you don't want, or maybe it's just starting to get going and you, you don't want to cut it. So it really limits your opportunity. Obviously, this doesn't happen very often with the larger cap stuff, but it can do because as a trade gets more crowded with short sellers, a lot of borrow comes on, a lot of people are borrowing stock to short, uh, you know, people start to recall it and say, you know what, I want it back for, for whatever reason that may be. And that could be just to damage you as well. And we'll get to that in a second with the squeeze part. But number three is the borrow costs and diff payments. You have to pay a fee, an annual fee, to borrow stock for sure. Well, if you're spread betting, if you're CFD trading, it doesn't matter, it's just, it's just wrapped up in the, in the trade. But effectively every evening, you're gonna have to pay to borrow that stock. So that's the fee that the stockholder is taking. And that could be as high as, I've seen stocks that are asking 100% a year plus to borrow. So in other words, it's gonna go bust in a year, within the year for you to make any money, otherwise you've lost 100%. So yeah, that's an extreme example, but you've still gotta pay this cost to carry. Uh, uh, or the borrowing cost, should I say, of short difference cost to carry, borrowing cost. And not forgetting any dividend payments, you've gotta pay them out of your pocket because uh, you, you, it's going to come from somewhere. 
You know, if you're short and someone's long, long pay receives the dividend, you've got to pay that dividend um, from your pocket. So that's something to be aware of too. All right, number four is the squeeze on crowded trades. This is the biggest one, guys, is that if this short trade is crowded, and often they do get crowded because the fundamentals look poor, whatever it is, a lot of people are going short, a lot of people are aggressively selling it, then everyone, everyone else in the industry is aware that this is a crowded short trade. And everyone also is aware that your losses are unlimited. So how do you hurt those people and get those people to, how do you get the price to go higher? You would buy a lot of stock to force the price higher, force the price higher, force the price higher, until you get to a point where you know that a lot of these guys can't take any more and they're gonna have to cover. And how do you cover a short? You buy. And that extra buying causes what's called a short squeeze and a real stratospheric quick movement to the upside where shorts are hurting, they've got to come out, they're covering it, cost of cap the cost of borrow has gone high, um, longs know, other people know, not necessarily longs, but other people know that there's a crowded trade, they know there's not much liquidity there perhaps, they know that there's a lot of traders are in pretty heavy short, it's gonna take them several days to exit the short, and you get these short squeeze scenarios. Famous one, Volkswagen, go back and check that out on Google, maybe I'll do a video about that uh, separately, but, People started then recalling the stock as well as it being squeezed and it was just a disaster for short sellers. So be aware of that guys. Shorting's fine, obviously for day trading and you're running out in a day, probably not gonna to apply to you, but being careful on unlimited loss. I don't think I've seen anything in a day suddenly rocket, you know, multiple hundreds of percent. It does happen with news comes out on some small companies, biotechs, whatever liquidity is low, so they're still being cautious. Uh, but if you're trading the big cap stocks intraday, you perhaps don't worry about this so much, especially the borrowing costs and what have you. Borrowing costs won't apply for intraday, nor will div payments. Um, but just being aware, shorting stocks can be a very lucrative trading uh, opportunity and trading strategy, but there are some downsides and some hidden risks to it. But as long as you're aware of it, it's like anything else. Keep the risk managed and you'll be fine. All right, guys, take care. See you in the next one and keep the risk managed. <laughs> Bye-bye.